Chapter 1971 Chapter 1971 Primordial Heart Descends As the light in special forging room faded, a brilliant magic array appeared on the table. The twelve arrays had combined perfectly to form a gigantic silver magic array that caused the space inside the room to freeze. As the silver magic array flowed into the twelve magic array scrolls before Shi Feng, the room reverted to its original state. The twelve magic array scrolls across the table then began to glow with a silvery light. Wonderful, I've finally succeeded. Shi Feng was a little excited as he gazed at the scrolls on the table. Although he had gone so far as to spend an elemental source, he had at least managed to produce one set of void field scrolls. With this, he could proceed with his plans. Following which, Shi Feng inspected the magic array scrolls. So strong, Shi Feng was ecstatic when he saw the attributes displayed. The original void field only encompassed a 3,000 yard radius, but after Shi Feng had used the source of void, the radius had increased to 5,000 yards. Moreover, the strengthened void field could suppress a monster's basic attributes up to a maximum of 50%. It would also suppress mythic monsters by up to 20% and Grand Lord ranked archaic species by up to 30%. Most importantly, void field's duration had increased from 12 hours to 24 hours. Although a 24-hour duration seemed short to Shi Feng, who was very familiar with the ins and outs of the Witch's Hill, it was plenty of time especially now that the primordial heart had descended and Witch's Hill's monsters had grown stronger and more numerous. After the primordial heart had descended in the past, a forbidden land had appeared in the Witch's Hill. To be precise, a crack in space-time had manifested, serving as the entrance to the forbidden land. The place beyond the space-time crack was partly considered a forbidden land due to the space-time seal that had been placed on the map, preventing players from teleporting there. Moreover, all of the monsters beyond the crack originated from other worlds. Not only were they incomparably powerful, but their combat standards were also higher than monsters in the outside world. Including the randomly appearing boss monsters, players of the same level would struggle to survive in the Forbidden Land. Fortunately, since mainstream players had already reached level 100 by the time the Forbidden Land had manifested, its level 70 monsters had been no threat. On the contrary, the Forbidden Land had become an excellent location to grind for equipment and materials. As monsters originating from other worlds, they had a much higher drop rate for weapons and equipment compared to monsters that were born on the continent of God's domain. Many of the materials they dropped were also unique to other worlds, and they had a chance of dropping the resuscitation potion recipe which even level 100 plus players coveted. The resuscitation potion only had one function, resurrecting players. However, unlike the healer class's resurrection spells, a player wouldn't lose any EXP when resurrected with the resuscitation potion, although they would have to endure a weakened state for 12 hours. During that time, the resurrected player wouldn't be able to fight. Furthermore, the resuscitation potion could only be used once every 24 hours, and it couldn't be used on tier 4 or above players. In God's domain, even if a healer resurrected a player, they'd still lose a considerable amount of EXP. When players were resurrected through the system, they'd lose an entire level of EXP. Regardless of how they returned to life, players would have to grind for several days to recover their losses. Hence, the resuscitation potion had been extraordinarily popular among players in the past. Only, the resuscitation potion recipe was not easy to acquire. Normally, it only dropped in other worlds, and as a result, man players had fervently grinded in the Witch's Hill's Forbidden Land, despite having already reached level 100. Due to the recipe's rarity, players had even been obeyed to sell it for several thousand gold in a proper auction. Demand for the resuscitation potion had also been relentless on the market. Despite the 20 silver production cost, the potion had sold for 2 gold per bottle. The resuscitation potion had even sold for 3 gold per bottle at its peak. Many players had made a fortune through selling resuscitation potions. Unfortunately, the Witch's Hill's Forbidden Land was extremely dangerous to Tier 2 players, but now that Shi Feng had the Void Field, he could lead his guildmates to grind there. Not only would they level up quite fast, 
but they could also grind for the resuscitation potion recipe and primordial crystal fragments, killing three birds with one stone. Now that Shi Feng had experienced successfully producing a void field, he continued to craft more. He knew that he had made a mistake when combining the twelve magic arrays during his first three attempts, but after his success, he had a more accurate grasp of the array's flow of mana. Following which, Shi Feng attempted to produce the void field magic array four more times, resulting in two success. The outcome was barely tolerable. Glancing at the bottle of void blood in his hand, Shi Feng noted that only four drops remained in the bottle. It wasn't enough for another attempt. He had previously spent two bottles of void blood to activate the teleportation array to the Otherworld Gate. Hence, if he wanted to craft more void field magic array scrolls, he'd have to collect more. These three sets should last me quite some time. Taking a look at the three sets of scrolls in his hands, Shi Feng decided to travel to the Forbidden Land to grind. Once his guildmates were settled in the area, he'd look for more ways to acquire Void Blood. Following which, Shi Feng left the Candlelight Trading Firm and made his way to Zero Wing's residence to prepare for his trip to the Witch's Hill's Forbidden Land. The Primordial Heart had descended in the Witch's Hill some time ago. As a result, the number of players roaming the city streets had visibly decreased. The various adventurer teams and guilds had long since left the city to explore this new expansion pack. The majority of the players still around were merchant players, including members from Chambers of Commerce. These players were currently purchasing monster loot or selling consumable items. Purchasing magic grass in bulk, three silver per stock, buying as many as you have, offer is available long term. Four Seasons Chamber of Commerce purchasing primordial crystal fragments for 20 silver per fragment, 21 silver for those selling more than 10 fragments, 22 silver for those selling more than 100 fragments. Selling primordial crystal fragments for 25 silver each, only three fragments remaining. First come, first served. The voice of hawking players filled the street. The shops on both sides of the street had also put out signs stating that they would purchase primordial crystal fragments long term. Everyone was going crazy over primordial crystal fragments right now. However, the situation didn't surprise Shi Feng in the slightest. God's Domain had very few items that could be used to nurture guild mounts, and most of these items hadn't yet been discovered. Now that players had learned about the primordial crystals, it would cause a massive commotion. Just before Shi Feng reached the guild residence, Aqua Rose contacted him. Guild leader, the secret pavilions Yuan Tiexin and his entourage have come to meet you. Apparently, he has something important he wishes to discuss with you. Would you like to meet with him now? Aqua Rose asked. The secret pavilion is looking for me? Shi Feng could not help but smile upon hearing this. All right, have them wait for me in the second floor's reception room. I'll head there immediately. Although he knew that the primordial heart's appearance would cause quite a commotion, he hadn't expected it to move the secret pavilion. Shi Feng disconnected the call and made his way to the residence's second flow, or reception room. Chapter 1972. Chapter 1972, Joining the Chamber of Commerce. Zero Wing's Residence, Second Floor Reception Room. As Shi Feng entered the room, Yuan Tiexin and Purple Jade, who softly chatted on the sofa, stood to greet him. Both of them had already reached level 59, and although they had hidden their weapons and equipment's glow effects, Shi Feng could tell that they carried extraordinary items based on the faint pressure he felt from the two players. Purple Jade, in particular, felt like a sharp, unsheathed blade. She also felt quite dynamic. So this is a true genius? Shi Feng was inwardly shocked when he saw Purple Jade. While he could not tell how much her basic attributes had improved, he could sense that Purple Jade had set foot in the Realms of Truth as someone who had done the same. The Realms of Truth were different from the Realms of Refinement. The Realms of Refinement only focused on improving one's physical control, whereas the Realms of Truth focused on the application of strength, while better control could reduce players' shortcomings and increase their latent potential, better application allowed players to utilize more of their potential. However, God's Domain's various large guilds 
didn't have a method of nurturing players in the realms of truth yet. Normally, players needed a wealth of combat experience and self-exploration to reach these realms. Even Shi Feng had only accomplished the feat after many fortuitous encounters, yet despite receiving no guidance and having far less combat experience, Purple Jade had entered the realms of truth. Even the word genius was not sufficient to describe the young woman. Shi Feng had spent plenty of time trying to guide Zero Wing's core upper echelons to these realms, but even now, not one of them had succeeded. Meanwhile, when Purple Jade saw Shi Feng entering the room, her eyes glowed with fighting spirit. A hint of reverence for the man before her also flashed in her eyes. Unbeknownst to Shi Feng, she had only reached the realms of truth because of him. She had reached these realms recently and had only been able to do so after diligently studying Shi Feng's numerous battles in the Or Empire. Once she had entered the realms of truth, she had challenged and defeated multiple peak experts from the various superpowers. Guild Leader Black Flame, congratulations. Due to the battle in the Ice Jade Forest, Zero Wing's reputation nearly rivals the Dragon Phoenix Pavilions now. Yuan Tixin congratulated as he watched Shi Feng carefully. Thank you, Shi Feng said. Revealing a faint smile, he continued, However, Elder Yuan, I'm sure you're not just here to congratulate Zero Wing, correct? Indeed, Yuan Tixin replied as he revealed an envelope. After handing the envelope to Shi Feng, he continued, This is a report regarding Blackwater and Beast Emperor's latest movements. I believe it will be of some help to Zero Wing. You're providing information for free? Shi Feng looked at the envelope in confusion. He had to admit that both Blackwater and Beast Emperor posed a significant threat to his guild. Examining their latest movements would indeed help Zero Wing quite a bit, but information like this was incredibly important. Normally, the secret pavilion might not even consider selling the information to Zero Wing. That's right, consider it a gift to celebrate the partnership between the secret pavilion and Zero Wing, Yuan Tixin said. I believe you can guess the pavilion's goal in this. Naturally, we're interested in the primordial crystals. The primordial crystals are even more effective in nurturing guild mounts than the Eclipse Gate's energy essence. They're also much easier to procure. Meanwhile, Zero Wing owns the only guild city in Witch's Hill, so the secret pavilion wishes to cooperate with your guild. Yuan Tixin's proclamation didn't surprise Shi Feng. The primordial crystals were indeed an excellent item for nurturing guild mounts. He then asked, Cooperation? May I know how we are going to cooperate? The secret pavilion wish s to invite the candlelight trading firm into the secret chamber of commerce. As for the entry conditions, Zero Wing will only have to sacrifice five shops in different locations and a single virtual store in Zero Wing City. In addition, the Secret Chamber of Commerce requires a permanent reservation of 300,000 entry slots into Zero Wing City, Yuan Tixin said, chuckling. May I know if you are interested in this offer, Guild Leader Black Flame? Joining the Secret Chamber of Commerce? When Yuan Tixin finished speaking, Aqua Rose, who had accompanied Shi Feng, was stunned, flashing the pavilion's representative an incredulous look. The secret pavilion was a transcendental power in the virtual gaming world. The strength it wielded was simply unfathomable. The secret chamber of commerce the pavilion had developed was similarly unfathomable, as very few chambers of commerce could rival secret's range of influence. Needless to say, secret was far more powerful than 7th Street. Without a doubt, secret was one of the best chambers of commerce in God's domain right now. Many superpowers were desperate to join, but very few were actually invited into the Alliance. Yet, the Secret Pavilion had visited Zero Wing City to invite the Guild personally. Frankly, Aqua Rose didn't know what to say. If Zero Wing joined the Secret Chamber of Commerce, the Candlelight Trading Firm's income could increase several fold as long as the firm offered sufficiently attractive products. I'm curious, why Zero Wing? Shi Feng asked the man before him. There are two other guild towns in the Witch's Hill, and both will soon be promoted to intermediate rank. If the secret pavilion gives the word, both ruling guilds will likely hand their towns over on a silver platter. Naturally, we have considered that option, but the Primordial Heart's descent has increased Monster's strength in the Witch's Hill. Monster raids also occur frequently at night. 
with the town's defenses, they'll have a hard time coping with the map's current monsters. Who knows how long they will last. However, Zero Wing City is different. Even if the Witches Hill's monsters continue to grow stronger, Zero Wing City will likely remain unaffected. Moreover, Zero Wing City has an excellent environment, which will be of great help to the guild members we send here, Yuan Tiexin said. He withheld no information regarding the Secret Pavilion's reasons for selecting Zero Wing for a partnership. I see. Shi Feng could not help but admire the Secret Pavilion's information network and decisiveness. The Primordial Heart had only recently descended, so the monster's changes weren't yet obvious, yet the Secret Pavilion had already considered various possibilities. Shi Feng hadn't expected the Pavilion to place so much importance in the Primordial Crystals that it would offer Zero Wing a seat in the Secret Chamber of Commerce, either. To protect both parties' interests, a guild would offer 1% of its shares when attempting to join a Chamber of Commerce. Hence, the various Chambers of Commerce took member recruitment very seriously. Guild Leader Black Flame, if you are fine with these conditions, why don't we sign the contract now? Yuan Tiexin asked Shi Feng, who had maintained a calm composure throughout the conversation. Once we sign, Zero Wing's candlelight trading firm will become a member of the Secret Chamber of Commerce and enjoy all of the connections the Alliance possesses. You will find it far easier to sell and buy items. All right, I have no issues with the offer. Shi Feng had no problems with accepting the mentioned conditions, and joining the Secret Chamber of Commerce would provide Zero Wing quite a bit of help, especially now that the guild lacked materials. The magic-breaking crossbows, hell tanks, and basic combat devices all required a large number of rare materials to produce. If Zero Wing relied on its own strength, it would only be able to collect a limited supply of each material. But with the Secret Chamber of Commerce's connections, it could easily, but bells, yield its stockpile in a short time. After Shi Feng signed a contract with Yuan Tiexin, he handed over five shops and one virtual store in Zero Wing City. In addition, he reserved 300,000 entry slots in Zero Wing City for the Secret Pavilion's use. After all, a flood of players visited the city each day, and there was a limit to how many the city could accommodate at one time. If the Secret Pavilion did not have any reserve slots, its members would be forced to stand in line to enter Zero Wing City. Once the transaction was complete, the Candlelight Trading Firm joined the Secret Chamber of Commerce's member list, and the two organizations exchanged 1% of their shares. Shortly after Candlelight joined the Chamber of Commerce, news of it quickly spread to the various superpowers. Chapter 1973 Chapter 1973 Guild Potential As news about Zero Wing's Candlelight Trading Firm joining the Secret Chamber of Commerce spread, a commotion erupted among the various superpowers in God's domain. What's going on? How did the Secret Chamber of Commerce accept a guild like Zero Wing? Zero Wing really is impressive. It has already proven its strength to contend with a superpower, and now it has even joined the Secret Chamber of Commerce. The guild's financial strength will grow considerably. Now, as long as Zero Wing solidifies its foundations, it definitely has the potential to become a super first-rate guild. It seems that God's Domain will soon have a new superpower. Send someone to investigate Zero Wing immediately. From today on, I want a team stationed in Zero Wing City. I want to know the guild's every move. Many superpowers had no power to join the Secret Pavilion's Chamber of Commerce, regardless of how much they wanted to, yet a non-superpower like Zero Wing had done just that. This situation earned Zero Wing many superpowers' envy. In addition, this turn of events had forced the various superpowers to pay closer attention to Zero Wing. They no longer considered the smaller guild insignificant, but one with the potential to become a competitor. Sufficient financial strength was crucial to developing a guild in God's domain. Zero Wing might have repelled Miracle, but it had relied on various tools to do so. Meanwhile, as the various superpowers continued developing in God's domain, it was only a matter of time before they obtained such tools of their own. At that time, Zero Wing would lose its advantage. Hence, the various superpowers hadn't truly considered the guild a threat, but the situation had changed. The secret chamber of commerce was a gold mine. 
If a guild joined the trade alliance and utilized its connections appropriately, it would generate a massive income and secure a large number of resources. Even if the guild failed to take advantage of Secret's connections, it could still increase its trading firm's income by a large margin through service charges from helping the Alliance's other members sell their products. This increased income would greatly help the Guild's development, and these benefits would be available until the Trade Alliance crumbled. Meanwhile, on one of the islands in the Sea of Death, Big Sis Rain, Big News, Zero Wing's Candlelight Trading Firm has joined the Secret Chamber of Commerce. Blue Phoenix reported as she ran up to Phoenix Rain, who currently commanded a battle. Joined the secret chamber of commerce? Phoenix Rain blinked in surprise. How is that possible? So many superpowers have tried to join secret only to be rejected. Even Starlink only managed to join after purchasing the magic crystal vein at the secret pavilion's internal auction. It's true, news of this has already spread to the various superpowers, Everyone's saying that the secret pavilion has lost its mind to invite Zero Wing, Blue Phoenix said, grinning. Big Sis Rain, now that Zero Wing has joined secret, Nine Dragons Emperor won't be able to attack the guild's financials even if we don't help out. That's right. Even if Nine Dragons Emperor uses everything he has to stop Zero Wing's sales, he can't cut off secret's channels. Now, we can focus on that large-scale team quest, Phoenix Rain said, nodding. She had nominated Zero Wing to 7th Street because she had been worried that she couldn't stop Nine Dragons Emperor from moving against her ally once she left the continent of God's domain. Now that Zero Wing had joined the secret chamber of commerce, which was even more powerful than 7th Street, the situation couldn't be any more favorable. Similarly, news had reached the various top chambers of commerce. Zero Wing seems to be quite capable. Seventh Street rejected Zero Wing's conditions, yet the guild has joined secret? I wonder how Seventh Street's members will feel after hearing about this. Zero Wing demanded less than half of what Seventh Street wreck you wired. There's nothing unusual about its refusal. As for Zero Wing's membership with secret, based on the chamber's focus on profits, I assume its entry conditions were quite strict. Most likely. The secret chamber of commerce's greed is insatiable. Zero Wing must have suffered quite a loss to join secret. While the various top chambers of commerce were surprised to hear that Zero Wing had joined just the secret pavilion's chamber of commerce, they did not consider the matter that important ties. After all, Zero Wing had no value in their opinions, nor did the guild have the support of any corporations. It was a miracle that the guild had risen to its current position without falling, even if Zero Wing had a future in God's domain, it wouldn't be very bright. Since the secret pavilion had extended an invitation to Zero Wing, it must have demanded an absurd price. However, when the Seventh Street Chamber of Commerce heard the news, its members simply smiled. They didn't share the other top chamber's opinions. Whether Zero Wing joined the secret chamber of commerce or not, it had nothing to do with them. They only knew that Zero Wing wouldn't have benefited their alliance even if it had joined. Zero Wing wouldn't benefit Secret either. This incident was nothing but a farce. While God's Domain's various powers discussed the matter, Shi Feng had designated Aqua Rose and Melancholic Smile to handle matters regarding the Secret Chamber of Commerce. He then led a team of 10,000 elite and expert players out of Zero Wing City and to the Witch's Hill's Forbidden Land. Zero Wing's members bounced with excitement during their journey. They got to see a mythical player like Shi Feng up close, and he had even informed them that he would take them out to level up during their operation. This meant they would personally get to watch Shi Feng fight. Once they returned, they'd definitely boast about the trip to their friends. But despite their enthusiasm, following Shi Feng wasn't easy. The Primordial Heart's descent had drastically changed the Witch's Hill. Now, large groups of monsters were a common sight. Moreover, not only did these monsters possess powerful basic attributes, but they also used strangely impressive combat standards. They encountered a few powerful 100-man adventurer teams that these monsters had nearly wiped out along their journey. As for the 20-man teams they stumbled upon, they had tread very carefully through the area unless they had a Tier 2 MT with them. 
The Witch's Hill was far more dangerous than anyone had expected. Only the various large guilds' 1,000-man teams barely succeeded near the border of the Witch's Hill's inner region. These guild teams did not dare to venture any farther. As for the teams that operated in the Witch's Hill's inner area, they were either expert teams from the various large guilds or 1,000-man teams from well-known adventurer teams. Only the teams of Tier 2 experts had any hope of surviving with 100 members. The monsters in the inner area were simply too powerful. Even the weakest monster was a level 61 chieftain, and the chieftains employed combat power that was on par with the late stage of the Trial Tower's second floor. Even an ordinary Tier 1 expert would die against such a monster in a one-on-one, -on -one, not to mention ordinary players. However, despite entering the Witch's Hill's inner region, Shi Feng showed no intention of letting his team fight here. Rather, he continued to lead his team deeper into the Witch's Hill. As Zero Wing's members followed their guild leader, they couldn't help their growing nerves. Although they had 10,000 elite and expert players, the majority of them had only reached Tier 1 and were level 55 or 56. The team's ordinary experts were only level 57, and the Tier 2 experts that accompanied them had only reached level 58. After following Shi Feng's lead for more than two hours, these players arrived before a gravel-filled gorge. Not only did this area drown in a deathly aura, but it was also within the Witch's Hill's core area. The weakest monster, Air, was a level 65 chieftain, while most of these monsters were level 66 and 67 lords. There were also quite a few level 69 grand lords around the gorge. At first glance, the gorge contained tens of thousands of monsters, and all of them were far closer to each other than the inner region's monsters. Most importantly, a gigantic, level 70 mythic monster lay in the center of the gorge. Chapter 1974 Chapter 1974, Sacred Leveling Ground A mountainous, scaled lizard lay in the center of the gorge, and a layer of poisonous, green fog covered a 50-yard radius around it. No life survived within this fog, and even the earth seemed dry beneath it, as if the fog had devoured the ground's very life force. Despite gazing at this lizard from afar, Zero Wing's members couldn't help but shudder. A level 70 mythic monster. Aside from the fact that it was more than 10 levels higher than they were, the potent, poisonous fog around it made the monster impossible to approach. In addition, its gigantic body, over a hundred meters in length, could easily change the terrain with a casual move. A single claw swipe could likely eliminate dozens of them. They hadn't even reached level 60, but even if they were the same level as this monster, they'd likely be able to do little more than watch the giant lizard from afar. After all, the mythic lizard wasn't alone. Tens of thousands of Lord and Great Lord monsters lingered around the boss. To make matters worse, primordial gas filled the gorge. It would likely take a Tier 2 party of the same level to defeat any of these lords, while defeating each Great Lord would require a full Tier 2 20-man team. Even the guild's Tier 2 MTs, Kola, Turtledove, and Yewumion, felt uneasy as they watched the Forbidden Lands monsters, much less the team's elite members. With their current attributes and combat standards, they shouldn't have any issue tanking one or two level 67 or 68 Great Lords by themselves without activating a Berserk skill. They could even tank one level 69 Grand Lord, although they'd have to push their limits to do so but more than 20 Grand Lords wandered the Forbidden Land, as well as plenty of Great Lords. If all these monsters charged at them together, only death would await these players. Guild Leader, even Tier 2 players like us will have trouble grinding here. With the Tier 1 player's strength, I'm afraid that... Shadow Sword said worriedly as he eyed the gorge below him. Ignoring the mythic monster in the center, he could feel the threat of death from several other areas. If he felt like this while subjected to such pressure, the Tier 1 team members would fare far worse. It was safe to say that their team didn't have the power to grind in this forbidden land right now. If we try to grind these monsters as they currently are, it is impossible, but if we have their basic attributes and remove the primordial gas's negative effects? Shifeng asked, smiling. 
The Witch's Hill's new Forbidden Land wouldn't pose any threat to level 100 plus players, but it was an immensely hazardous area to players who hadn't yet reached level 70. Of course, it was also a sacred area for leveling and grinding equipment. Since no one had explored the Forbidden Land yet, it contained the maximum number of monsters it could hold. However, that also meant that the area's drop rate and monster respawn rate were much higher than normal. Even if 10,000 players grinded in this forbidden land, there would be plenty of resources to go around. Unfortunately, transforming this hazardous area into a treasured land required players to fulfill one condition. They had to be strong enough to grind these monsters. A bunch of tier one players that hadn't even reached level 70 would be seeking their own death by coming here. But they could change that with the void field. If they could decrease the monsters basic attributes by nearly half, and remove the primordial gas's negative effects on players, even level 60, tier 1 players could slay these creatures. Only, their grinding efficiency would be quite poor. However, the bonus EXP from killing monsters of a higher level would even the playing field. Shi Feng had led so many Zero Wing members to such a dangerous area, specifically to help them level up quickly, as well as collect primordial crystal fragments. He might be a particularly powerful player in God's domain and capable of nurturing a significant number of experts in a short time. But, at the end of the day, there was a limit to what a small number of powerful players could achieve. If he wanted Zero Wing to become truly formidable, he had to improve the strength of Zero Wing's members as a whole. Naturally, one of the ways players could grow stronger in God's domain was by leveling up. Every five levels was a major turning point in the game since better weapons and equipment would become available at those intervals. Hence, Shi Feng had decided to raise his guild members' levels as quickly as possible. If he could help a large number of guild members reach level 60 within the next few days, it would elevate Zero Wing's overall strength. After all, even the various large guild's peak experts had only recently reached level 59, they were still far from the level 60 threshold, and the various guilds' elite and expert members were even further. Have the monsters, basic attributes, and remove the primordial gas's suppression. After considering Shi Feng's comment, Shadow Sword deemed that grinding here would be possible if that were true. Even if their Tier 1 MTs couldn't tank these monsters, they could leave the task to the Tier 2 MTs, plenty of which had joined this expedition. But is that possible? Relax, I've prepared an item to do just that. Shi Feng said as he retrieved the strengthened set of Void Field Magic Array scrolls from his bag. A magic array? But with so many monsters, Shadow Sword roughly understood what Shi Feng intended to do when he saw the stack of magic array scrolls, but with so many monsters around them, they'd need dozens or hundreds of arrays to cover the gorge. Wait a moment, you'll understand what I mean, Shi Feng said. He then passed the Void Field Scrolls to Alluring Summer and a few other magical class experts. Take these scrolls and activate them in these locations. Try to avoid any monsters while you activate the scrolls. Leave it to us. After examining the coordinates Shi Feng had indicated, Alluring Summer and her companions went into action. Shi Feng intended to activate the strengthened Void Field from halfway down the gorge. If they successfully activated the magic array there, it would cover nearly half of the area, giving Zero Wing's team enough room to fight. Once Alluring Summer and the other casters were in position, they unfurled the magic array scrolls and activated them. A gigantic, silver magic array then manifested over nearly half of the Forbidden Land, enveloping every monster within range. Void Field then purified the primordial gas in the affected area, dissipating it. In addition, every monster rapidly lost basic attributes. Zero Wing's members were stunned. The Lord and Great Lord ranked monsters' attributes fell by 50%. Now they couldn't even compare to level 60 monsters of the same rank. The only advantages they still had were their combat standards and high level. MTs, start pulling aggro. Fight in 100-man units. Do not enter each other's combat areas. Cola, you and the other Tier 2 MTs will tank the Grand Lords. Tier 1 MTs. You only need to handle the lords and great lords. Shi Feng commanded once the void field was complete. Following which, the
the 10,000 Zero Wing members quickly split into 100 teams of 100 players. These teams then split up and hit different areas in the Forbidden Land. Each team dealt with three to five Great Lords, and those with Tier 2 MTs handled at least one Level 69 Grand Lord. Due to Voidfield's power, the Forbidden Land's danger had significantly decreased. However, Zero Wing's members weren't able to deal much damage due to the level suppression. Even Tier 2 damage dealers barely dealt more than minus 10,000 with each attack. Even so, the region's monsters gradually lost HP. Normally, Zero Wing's 100-man elite teams could eliminate a party of lords and grand lords of the same level in 10 minutes or less, but now, it took each team half an hour to defeat a party of monsters. However, as the lords and great lords died, everyone's experience bars increased by a sizable chunk. After gaining an ab, undance of EXP, the teams regained their enthusiasm. All of the team's level 55 elite members reached level 56 after around 6 hours of grinding, while the level 56 elite players only needed a little more time to level up. At most, they'd need another 4 or 5 hours to reach level 57. Their leveling speed was nearly 5 times as fast as experts in other areas. However, these players were far more surprised by how much loot they gained than the awarded EXP. Chapter 1975 Chapter 1975 Level Increases Zero Wings members had fought in the Forbidden Land for six hours. The weakest foes they had slain had been chieftain rank, while most had been lords. Perhaps because they were the first to kill these monsters, the team had collected over 4th and 100 primordial crystals during their six-hour grind. These fragments could fetch over a thousand gold on the market, but only a fool would sell their primordial crystal fragments. With ten fragments, one could synthesize a primordial crystal, which they could use to nurture their guild mounts. If one were lucky, they might even upgrade their guild mount to bronze rank after using 20 to 30 primordial crystals. The Forbidden Lands monsters had also dropped enough weapons and equipment to make these players' eyes glow. All of the dropped weapons and equipment were level 60 or above. The various large guilds had been expending a lot of effort to collect level 55 equipment lately. Raiding level 55 team dungeons wasn't as easy as level 50 dungeons, and unlike the latter, in which tier 1 players could still be effective, Level 55 team dungeons had been tailored for Tier 2 players. Tier 1 players would simply be a burden in Level 55 team dungeons. They'd only be useful if they wore extremely high-quality equipment. Hence, the various large guilds struggled desperately for Level 55 weapons and equipment. Meanwhile, most of the equipment the Lords in the Witch's Hills Forbidden Land dropped was Bronze Rank, although they had a small chance of dropping Mysterious Iron equipment. Naturally, the Great Lords dropped Mysterious Iron and Secret Silver equipment, with the latter having a severely lower drop rate. While Grand Lords were guaranteed to drop Secret Silver equipment, they did have a higher drop rate than Great Lords. They also had a slight chance of dropping Fine Gold equipment. Since Zero Wings members were the first to pioneer the Forbidden Land, there was an extremely high number of monsters in the area. Even the rarely seen Great Lords and Grand Lords were available in abundance right now. After just six hours of hard work, Zero Wing's 10,000-man team had obtained over a dozen pieces of Level 60 Fine Gold equipment, over 100 pieces of Level 60 Secret Silver equipment, and more than a thousand Mysterious Iron and Bronze equipment pieces. Their operation had been quite lucrative. The team's latest harvest was already worth more than the strengthened Void Field Magic Array's production costs. Leveling up here is so fast. At this rate, I'll climb from 57 to 58 in less than a day. Grinding higher leveled monsters is amazing. Our guild leader is still the best. He actually got his hands on such a powerful magic array. Once I reach level 60, I'll purchase some level 60 mysterious iron equipment and get rid of my outdated level 50 items. My friends will die from envy taunt one. That's right. A friend of mine that joined a super first-rate guild was recently boasting about how he had obtained level 55 secret silver equipment. Once I reach level 60, one can buy two or three pieces of level 60 secret silver equipment from the guild warehouse. 
The more Zero Wings members fought, the more enthusiastic they became. They showed no signs of fatigue. They all felt as if their struggle to level up had been a mere hallucination. At the same time, they were in awe of Shi Feng's abilities. After experiencing the wonder of this leveling speed, Zero Wings players grinded with even more effort. They even took out and used their stockpiled exotic stamina potions to stay in battle as long as possible. Shi Feng's team was far more energetic than he had expected. He had assumed that he'd need to use two more sets of normal Void Field Magic Array scrolls to get his team up to level 60, but watching these players' current leveling speed, he might only need one more set of Void Field scrolls. If that were the case, he could bring Zero Wing City's other elite and expert members here to level up as well. Time passed quickly. Whenever a player reached Lev, L60, Shi Feng would tell them to leave. If they had proven their strength, he'd instruct them to challenge their Tier 2 promotion quest at Thloing. If they weren't strong enough, they were told to improve their equipment and techniques. To keep the team full, Shi Feng had Aqua Rose send other guild members from Zero Wing City. After grinding for about 20 hours, several hundred of Zero Wing's Tier 1 experts had reached level 60. Once they traded Shi Feng for level 60 mysterious iron or secret silver equipment, they left to challenge their tier 2 promotion quests. Now, even the lowest leveled elite member was level 56, while most of them were level 57. The majority of Zero Wing's tier 1 experts were now level 59, with only a few stuck at level 58. The team's overall leveling speed was explosive. Grinding here proved far more effective than in 10 resource zones. Aqua Rose was immensely excited to see this. With the resources this forbidden land had to offer, Zero Wing could solidify its foundation and strength. In God's domain, every location had limited resources, and areas that could accommodate thousands of players, allowing them to level up rapidly, were incredibly rare. Generally, the various superpowers dominated these areas. After all, ordinary resource zones could only accommodate several hundred players at a time. If players flooded to a resource zone, leveling speed would decrease. It was easy to imagine how precious zones that could accommodate several thousand players were, yet this forbidden land easily served more than 10,000 players, and they all leveled at a phenomenal pace. If the various superpowers found out about this, their envy would know no bounds. Guild leader, we found three unknown alchemy recipes and an unknown stone tablet among the loot. Even an advanced appraisal can't identify them, a luring summer who was busy collecting the various team's loot suddenly reported. Unknown alchemy recipes and an unknown stone tablet? Shi Feng's lips curled into a smile as he considered a possibility. He then said, Bring them to me. Understood, I'll be right there. A luring summer said as she gave Shi Feng's excited expression an odd look. She then ran toward his current location. Once Shi Feng received the unknown recipes and tablet, he eagerly activated omniscient eyes to appraise the items. I was right. Shi Feng was ecstatic as the items revealed their information. Of the two items Alluring Summer had collected, the alchemy recipes were none other than the resuscitation potion recipes. Only master alchemists and above could use these, and each recipe was worth thousands of gold. Countless players had ventured to the Witch's Hill's Forbidden Land to grind for these recipes, and even then, they were unlikely to drop after a full day of grinding. Yet Shi Feng held three copies in his hands. He had to admit that the benefits of pioneering a forbidden land were truly wonderful. Not only were there plenty of monsters to kill, but items' drop rates were much higher than usual. The unknown stone tablet, however, was even more valuable than the resuscitation potion recipes. If Alluring Summer hadn't mentioned the tablet, he would have forgotten that it had a chance of dropping here. The unknown tablet had been crafted from Red Luminary's stone. It was an ancient god's secret key, an item that had been immensely famous throughout god's domain in the past. Normally, this item only dropped in other worlds, but since the monsters in the Witch's Hill's Forbidden Land were from other worlds, it had a slight chance of dropping. Unfortunately, the secret key's drop rate was so minuscule that no one had ever thought of grinding for it here. But despite its abysmal drop rate, an ancient god's secret key had appeared. Chapter 1976 
Chapter 1976, Ancient God's Secret Key. Translator, Exodus Tales, Editor Exodus Tales. Shi Feng could not help but grow a little excited as he looked at the red luminaire's stone tablet in his hand. The ancient god's secret key was an extremely rare item in god's domain, even rivaling fragmented legendary items. However, the ancient god's secret key was different from fragmented legendary items. Fragmented legendary items could only be obtained by killing powerful bosses, completing epic or above quests, or opening epic or above treasure chests. Fortunately, the ancient god's secret key had a chance of dropping from monsters that resided in the various other worlds. Of course, the monsters had to be level 50 great lords or above. In the past, the various major powers had all sought an ancient god's secret key, but the drop rate was painfully low. Moreover, player's luck attribute wouldn't affect the drop rate, and as a result, regardless of how hard the various major powers grinded for this item, very few had actually obtained one. Guild leader, is it very valuable? A luring summer asked when she saw Shi Feng's excited expression. Of course, it is extremely valuable, Shi Feng nodded. You could say that it's just as valuable as an epic treasure chest. An epic treasure chest? When Alluring Summer heard Shi Feng's claim, her eyes glowed as she gazed at the ancient god's secret key. An epic treasure chest had a very high chance of yielding epic items. Thus, they were undoubtedly precious to the various large guilds. Most guilds only had a small number of epic items at this stage of the game, and only the guild's upper echelons or peak experts qualified to use them. Even in Zero Wing, epic items were extremely rare. In total, Zero Wing had less than 100 epic items, and that was already enough to attract the various first-rate guilds' jealousy. However, we can't use this key yet. We need to be strong enough to obtain an epic item. Otherwise, we will simply waste the ancient god's secret key, Shi Feng said as he stored the key away. He had no intention of using the key right now. Instead, he commanded Zero Wing's members to move deeper into the Forbidden Land and grind its numerous field bosses. The ancient god's secret key was akin to an epic treasure chest, but unlike a treasure chest, players had to rely on their strength to obtain the key's harvest, not luck. Meanwhile, the greater one's survivability was, the more they'd gain from the ancient god's secret key. There had even been rumors in the past about a superpower obtaining a fragmented legendary item from the secret key. With a single fragmented legendary item, a guild could easily nurture a peak expert. It would even of even greater help when players challenge their tier 4 and 5 promotion quests. That was why all of the various major powers had coveted the ancient god's secret key. Fragmented legendary items were extraordinarily valuable, and even after a decade in god's domain, First-rate guilds had only collected a small number of them. Second-rate guilds had been lucky if they had one or two fragmented legendary items. Now that he had an ancient god's secret key, he had to be careful with how he used it. Of course, Shi Feng had no intention of letting it sit around and collect dust. Each secret key had a one-week expiration. Whether players used it or not, it would disappear after seven days, so it wasn't possible to save the key until it was most valuable. Shi Feng then handed the three resuscitation potion recipes to Aqua Rose, instructing her to bring them to Melancholic Smile and start the potion's production as soon as possible. The potion's necessary materials weren't particularly valuable. There had only been such a small supply of these potions in the past, despite the high demand, due to the recipe's rarity. God's Domain's superpowers had yet to obtain a resuscitation potion recipe, making this the perfect opportunity for Zero Wing to make a fortune. Once the various superpowers secured the recipes, though, Zero Win, G's profits through the potion would plummet. It was the same case with the strengthening devices. Initially, Zero Wing had earned quite a bit from selling the devices, but as more superpowers and first-rate guilds had obtained the strengthening device design, the competition had increased. As a result, Zero Wing's profits from the device had steadily decreased. Since the resuscitation potion didn't exist on the market yet, Zero Wing could monopolize the potion's sales. Zero Wing wasn't like the various superpowers. Not only did the various superpowers have a lot of territory in the game, but they also had support from major corporations. 
superpowers didn't have to worry about resources or funds since the corporations backing them provided a constant supply. However, Zero Wing didn't have that kind of support, relying on its own power to acquire funds and resources. Unfortunately, developing a guild's territory and increasing member count required a lot of both. This was especially true for the situation in the Orc Empire. While Zero Wing had been preoccupied with Miracle, according to the Secret Pavilion's report, Blackwater had made significant progress in raiding the Orc capital city's armory, obtaining quite a few war weapons. In addition, the guild had recently occupied another fortress in the Orc Empire. Due to this success, Blackwater had transferred even more members from its main headquarters to the Orc Empire. Moreover, Beast Emperor, Blackwater, and Dark Soul had secretly formed an alliance and intended to take over the Orc Empire. Annihilating Zero Wing was the first step in their plan. The alliance between these three powers wasn't good news for Zero Wing. Most importantly, unlike Blackwater and Dark Soul, Beast Emperor and Zero Wing were irreconcilable enemies. Shi Feng had severed Beast Emperor's path to promotion, and an active evil god's temple still existed within Star Moon Kingdom. So long as these two factors continued, only one could survive the war between Zero Wing and Beast Emperor. Hence, Shi Feng needed to prepare for this eventuality. Silverwing couldn't withstand a joint assault from these three powers with its current defenses. After organizing the rest of the loot, Shi Feng continued to lead Zero Wing's members as they gradually cleared out the monsters in the Forbidden Land's outer region, venturing farther towards its core. Although the Forbidden Land's outer region was home to a lot of monsters, the strongest in the area were Grand Lords. With Voidfield's suppression, Zero Wing easily took care of these monsters, and although they would respawn after some time, there weren't as many as there had been initially. Once they had limited the population, level 60, tier 2 experts would have no problems grinding these monsters efficiently, even without the Voidfield. Zero Wing's players would be fine as long as they didn't provoke the Grand Lords. As the team reached the Forbidden Land's inner region, their gazes settled on a gigantic, scaled lizard. Void lizard, void creature, mythic rank, level 70 HP, 600,000 and 600,000. Shi Feng had formed a 1,000-man team to raid the void lizard, over 600 of which were tier 2 players, and the lowest leveled among them was level 60. Once everyone was in position, Shi Feng had Kola, now level 61, begin the raid. If they had to face the Void Lizard under normal conditions, Shi Feng would have kept his players as far from the mythic boss as possible. Level 60 players had no hope of taking down a level 70 mythic monster, and even a tier 2 MT like Kola would only be able to tank the boss if he activated his Berserk skill. However, they didn't have to fight under normal circumstances. The strengthened Void Field was still in effect and the Void Lizard's basic attributes had decreased by 20%. In addition, Shi Feng had nine members of the team utilize the Nine Stars Polar Domain Magic Array to suppress the Void Lizard further, ensuring that the boss only retained 70% of its basic attributes. With it this week, even Kola could tank the V, Void Lizard without a Berserk skill, albeit barely. Unfortunately, the team wasn't able to deal much damage to the boss due to the level suppression. Even among the Tier 2 damage dealers, very few dealt more than minus 10,000 damage. However, with players like Shi Feng and Zero Wing's core upper echelons, all of whom had monstrous attributes, the team's total DPS exceeded the Void Lizard's battle recovery, steadily whittling away the Mythic Monster's HP. 90%, 60%, 30%. When the Void Lizard had 30% of its HP remaining, the boss went berserk. In response, Shi Feng ordered his team to activate their Berserk skills to endure the Void Lizard's Berserk period. After more than an hour, the team eventually defeated the Mythic Boss. As the Void Lizard died, everyone on the 1,000-man team received an abundance of EXP. Kola and a few other level 61 players instantly rose to level 62, and the other tier 2 players watched their experience bars increase by a sizable chunk. As for Shi Feng, a golden glow enveloped his body as he climbed from 69 to 70. Chapter 1977 Chapter 1977, Tier 2, Training Seeing the collapsed Void Lizard, 
Zero Wing's thousand-man raid team breathed a sigh of relief, joy surfacing on their expressions. The bountiful EXP the mythic monster had granted wasn't the only reason for their joy. They also celebrated the loot the boss had dropped. The dazzling mountain that had appeared beside the monster's colossal body made every member of the raid team drool. At first glance, there were easily more than 50 items in the pile. Over a dozen among them were weapons and equipment that had the glow of fine gold and dark gold items. However, the only item in the small mountain of loot that caught Shi Feng's eye was the bottle of void blood. With this, he could craft a few more sets of void field scrolls. As for the remaining items, the most valuable was the resuscitation potion recipe. In Shi Feng's opinion, the level 60 fine gold and dark gold weapons and equipment were average at best. The best piece of equipment that had dropped was the Void Shoes, a set of epic-ranked cloth armor boots. Shi Feng instantly handed the Void Shoes to Violet Cloud, increasing her epic item count to five. With Death's sigh, Violet Cloud could now easily contend with peak experts. I'm beat, Cola complained as he let his body fall to the ground. I never thought that fighting a higher-leveled mythic monster would cost so much stamina. Had the boss lasted any longer, I would have died from exhaustion. Compared to fighting the Void Lizard, the Grand Lords he had faced earlier were child's play. The Void Lizard had lasted more than an hour, and he had stayed on high alert throughout the fight due to the boss's high combat standard. If he had made the slightest mistake, he would have taken a direct hit, and he had no doubt that one hit would have been enough to end his life instantly. Fighting the Void Lizard was more mentally exhausting than grinding monsters for ten hours without a break. Cola had lost stamina at a severe rate, and although the system didn't provide an indicator for stamina, Cola guessed that he had less than 20% remaining based on how tired he felt. Had the raid continued for any longer and his stamina fallen below 10%, he would receive a penalty to his combat power. He wouldn't have been able to keep up with the Void Lizard's attacks, and it definitely would have instant killed him. Turtle Dove and Ye Wumian, who also rested on the ground, nodded in agreement. Fighting a mythic monster that was 10 levels higher than they were was truly exhausting. In fact, this raid had been even more intense than raiding the Void Serpent. Cola and the other Tier 2 MTs weren't the only ones exhausted. Everyone that participated in the raid practically had less than 30% stamina remaining. Only Shi Feng didn't seem tired as he moved towards the pile of loot that had manifested beside the boss's feet. Every Zero Wing member was shocked. Shi Feng had fought on the front line during the entire raid. His total damage output had also topped the raid chart, exceeding second place by more than double. Occasionally, he had even helped the MT's tank. Shi Feng should have used more stamina than anyone in the raid, yet he looked as if he had done nothing but watch. Fire Dance, who had come in second for damage dealt, was drenched in sweat, clearly just as exhausted as the MT's. Is the guild leader a monster? He's not even tired after such a long, arduous battle? Zero Wing's Tier 2 experts were confused as they watched Shi Feng collect the loot. They were all Tier 2. Logically, there should not be much of a difference between their total stamina and Shi Feng had fought far harder than they had, yet they were nearly out of stamina. That's normal. You guys made too many excess movements during the fight. Most importantly, you guys haven't adapted to the flow of battle, allowing you to fight at peak condition constantly. It is only natural that you run out of gas more quickly. Shi Feng could not help but laugh when he overheard his teammates' conversation. In truth, he was just as surprised, D, by how much stamina he still had. He had never expected the added benefit after reaching the realms of truth. Guild leader, do you have any training methods? Kola asked, desire flashing in his eyes. Although Kola had reached the refinement realm and could reduce his stamina consumption during fights a little, he was still leaps and bounds behind Shi Feng. He even wondered if Shi Feng had twice the stamina he had. Stamina was extremely important to expert players. If he could learn a technique that allowed him to reduce stamina consumption, he could rely on his stamina to whittle down an expert of equal standards in a fight. After all, fighting an expert player consumed stamina much faster than fighting a boss monster. 
Such a technique would be of great help whether he fought boss monsters or expert players in the future. Training, is it? Upon hearing Kola's question, Shi Feng realized how important it was to train his team in stamina control. Although controlling one's stamina wouldn't improve their combat power, it would have a massive impact on the player's performance. When grinding in the fields, players' grinding efficiency was largely dependent on their stamina. If players had various tools to aid in their stamina recovery, they could increase their grinding efficiency. However, such tools were very rare and valuable. Players simply couldn't afford to use them constantly. However, if players entered the realms of truth, not only could they increase their combat power, but they could also increase their leveling speed. After all, the lower one's stamina consumption was, the longer they could fight. Thinking up to this point, Shi Feng decided that it was time to train Fire Dance and the others in the Lost Town. Since the guild had lacked powerful combatants previously, Tier 2 players like Fire Dance didn't have the leeway to leave the front line. But now that Zero Wing had more than 1,000 Tier 2 players, Fire Dance and her companions could afford a break. Furthermore, the difference in the equipment standard of the various superpowers' peak experts and Zero Wing's core upper echelons shrunk as time passed. The various superpowers continued to collect more epic items, and most of their peak experts had obtained peak legacies. If Zero Wing wanted to maintain its lead on the various superpowers in terms of peak combatants, it was imperative that Fire Dance and the others grow stronger. The only reliable method Shi Feng could think of to increase Fire Dance and her companions' combat power was to train at the Lost Town's Extraordinary Tower. If Fire Dance and the others could reach the realms of truth, they could help the guild even more than they already did. In a situation where two players had equal basic attributes, a refinement realm expert that had entered the realms of truth as well could rival a flowing water realm expert in terms of combat power, and the former would have even better control of their abilities. Aqua, notify our main force members and have them gather in White River City's residence in two hours. We're going to participate in special stamina training. Shi Feng addressed Aqua Rose. Stamina training? I'll notify them right away. Aqua Rose was ecstatic to hear Shi Feng's latest order. However, after giving the matter some more thought, she could not help but ask, Guild leader, since we're participating in special training, why don't we include the guild's other experts as well? I don't want too many people to know about this training method yet. Moreover, the guild has many affairs that require Tier 2 experts to manage. Taking too many people at once isn't ideal, Shi Feng said, shaking his head. The Lost Town was a specialized training ground for the Realms of Truth. Its value was immeasurable. If the various superpowers found out about it, they would do everything in their power to take it from him. Hence, he had used the excuse of stamina training. If too many people found out about his lost town, it would increase the chances of the secret getting out. And he couldn't afford for that to happen. Zero Wing didn't have the ability to defend the town properly yet. Shi Feng didn't have to say more for Aqua Rose to understand what he was trying to say. She stopped asking questions and contacted the guild's main force members. Following which, Shi Feng held an internal auction for the weapons and equipment the Void Lizard had dropped. He then left the two remaining sets of Voidfield Scrolls with you zipping, and had him and the other Tier 2 internal members take charge of the grinding operation in the Forbidden Land. As long as they didn't provoke any mythic bosses, they wouldn't have any issues in the Forbidden Land with the Voidfield's assistance. Once Shi Feng had finished designating tasks, he left the Forbidden Land, pulling out a return scroll to teleport to White River City once teleportation was available again. Chapter 1978 Chapter 1978 Reputation Soars Star Moon Kingdom White River City How Lively When Shi Feng exited the teleportation hall, he was greeted by the sight of a crowded street. Merchant players were busy conducting business along the street, and impromptu teams recruited members for their dungeon raids. These impromptu teams were all quite strong, with at least level 56 members. Some teams even had the leadership of Tier 2 players. At this stage of the game, such impromptu teams were considered incredibly powerful. 
These teams in other cities were usually led by Tier 1 experts. Very few had Tier 2 experts. Shi Feng also spotted quite a few adventurer teams recruiting members, all of which were extremely powerful with more than 10 Tier 2 experts on average. Even a few well-known adventurer teams had come to White River City from other kingdoms. Most of the players on the street were high-leveled and well-equipped, in fact. Level 57 expert players were a common sight, and there were many independent players wearing multiple pieces of Level 50 secret silver equipment. At this point, White River City's prosperity actually surpassed Star Moon City. It looked nothing like an ordinary major NPC city, having developed far more than Shi Feng had expected. Zero Wing is amazing. Not only did it repel Miracle in the Black Dragon Empire, but I've also heard that it has recently joined the Secret Chamber of Commerce some. I'm definitely going to sign up for Zero Wing's mass recruitment. I've heard the same, and so many well-known adventurer teams have come to White River City to join the guild. Even if Zero Wing rejects their application, they're willing to work as subordinate adventurer teams for the guild. Because of this, White River City has seen a drastic increase in player traffic. I know, right? Although the resources around White River City aren't anything special, the city has a direct route to the Eclipse Gate, and that area has fairly abundant resources. Even if we don't make it into Zero Wing this time, it's not a bad idea to develop here. Furthermore, White River City is Zero Wing's main headquarters. When the guild recruits members in the future, we'll have a far better chance of joining the guild if we stay here. As Shi Feng walked through the streets, he heard many excited conversations regarding his guild. Although Zero Wing had displayed immense strength, it still lacked a powerful background and funding. It was a guild that relied on its own power to survive. Because of that, not many players and adventurer teams had optimistic views of Zero Wing's prospects. But now, the guild had also joined the Secret Chamber of Commerce. Even without the support of a major corporation, Zero Wing wouldn't have to worry about funding in the future with Secret's connections. It even had a high chance of becoming a super first-rate guild in the future. This presented a golden opportunity for adventurer teams and expert players. Existing super first-rate guilds and super guilds already had well-developed structures. They had also filled most of their available management positions. Climbing the corporate ladder would be extremely difficult for newcomers, even geniuses would need a long time to reach a significant position. However, Zero Wing was different. The guild wasn't yet stable, and its foundations had various holes and lacked talented players. However, now that Zero Wing had a hope of becoming a superpower, a player had a chance of becoming an upper echelon as long as they joined the guild and performed well. Becoming the upper echelon in a super first-rate guild was much faster than trying to climb the corporate ladder in an already established super first-rate guild. With such an opportunity before them, how could players and adventurer teams ignore this chance? This was the reason that White River City had become the focal point of Star Moon Kingdom. Large numbers of independent players and well-known adventurer teams swarmed the city, instantly pushing White River City's player population past 10,000. Moreover, these players' quality surpassed that of other kingdoms' capital cities. When Shi Feng reached the city's candlelight trading firm, he discovered that the guild residence wasn't the only busy area. Candlelight bustled with activity, and Liang Jing was busy reviewing the long line of lifestyle players standing near the shop's entrance. The line outside of the shop extended from one end of the street to the other. Moreover, the standards of these applying lifestyle players were considerably high. The weakest applicant was a basic lifestyle player. Not a single apprentice stood in line. There were also plenty of advanced lifestyle players waiting for their review. The scene stupefied the independent players that had just arrived in the city, and when other guilds members saw this, their eyes nearly fell from their sockets. All of the various large guilds offered incentives to recruit advanced lifestyle players, but very few usually took the bait, yet more than 100 of these players had eagerly applied to the candlelight trading firm, obediently waiting in line. The news certainly spread quickly. 
Shi Feng was a little surprised by the thousands of lifestyle players applying to join Zero Wing. He had to admit that joining a top chamber of commerce had its benefits. He hadn't expected Secret's reputation to be so useful. Candlelight hadn't officially started working with Secret, yet so many lifestyle players had rushed to join Zero Wing. By the time Candlelight collaborated with Secret and started to sell products through the chamber's channels, he'd likely see several times more players trying to join his trading firm. Shi Feng could relate to a certain degree. Although the former Candlelight trading firm had solid foundations and superb talent-nurturing capabilities, it hadn't had enough channels to sell its products. Now that Candlelight had both, lifestyle players considered it the best place to develop. Following which, Shi Feng headed to one of Candlelight's special workshops and handed a resuscitation potion recipe to Silent Wonder, leaving it to the chief alchemist to decide who should learn the recipe. He then visited his own special forging room and started to craft more void field magic arrays. After a little over an hour, Shi Feng had completed five sets of void field scrolls out of eight attempts. These five sets would enable many of Zero Wing's elite and expert players to grind in the Witch's Hill's forbidden land. Then, even without the void field, they could simply return to grinding in the forbidden land's outer region. Now that the area's monsters had died more than a few times, the respawn rate had decreased. Even the ordinary Tier 2 experts should have no problem helping the Tier 1 players grind there. Once Shi Feng had settled his affairs in candlelight, he made his way to Zero Wing's residence. Currently, Blackie and the other main force members sat in the residence's second floor hall. They had been waiting for quite some time, and they all looked forward to the special stamina training. One's combat standard was the basis for their combat power, and the more they fought expert players, the more this idea proved to be true. They used to overwhelm their opponents with their basic attributes, but as players progressed in the game, their advantage continued to lessen. Commander, we really lucked out this time. We've just joined the guild's main force, yet we get to partake in special internal training. I wonder what the guild leader has to teach us. Seven Light, a young, tier two swordsman, spoke excitedly to the middle-aged man beside him. I've already told you that I'm no longer Unbounded's commander. In the future, refer to me as Brother Bone, Stubborn Bone told the youth beside him, exasperated. But you're right, we've really gotten lucky this time. We actually get to train under Black Flame personally. I assume he'll teach us some kind of footwork or body technique. Every large guild had its own internal training programs. Some programs taught combat tech, neeks that were exclusive to the guild, and others provided lectures. Stubborn Bone, though, was confident that this training session would involve learning a combat technique through practice. After all, Zero Wing was famous for its many techniques. Quite a few other players in the group were former adventurer team members as well. For example, Remnant Cloud and Graceful Moon, the prior commander and vice commander of the Fire Cloud Fox adventurer team, were also present. These former adventurers were all curious about what Shi Feng had in store for them. Everyone has gathered, guild leader, Aqua Rose reported when she noticed Shi Feng enter the hall. Good, let's set off then. Shi Feng nodded. He then led the team to the residence's first underground floor. Chapter 1979. Chapter 1979, visiting the extraordinary tower again. First underground floor in Zero Wing's residence, under Shi Feng's lead, the group arrived before a strictly guarded room. Ten personal guards stood at the entrance. Zero Wing's main force members were shocked to see the personal guards. These NPCs were all level 75 or above, and the team was familiar with two of them, both secret silver personal guards. Even superpowers coveted such top-tier guards. Of the two secret silver personal guards, the level 76, tier 2 summoner was Aquarose's personal guard, while the level 76 tier 2 magic knight belonged to fire dance it had caused quite a commotion when the two women had obtained them although secret silver personal guards weren't strong enough to fight opponents of a higher tier like shi feng's anna and kite they could still rival tier 3 npcs of the same level not even a level 75 tier 2 peak expert would be a match for these guards as for current level 60 peak experts 
They'd only have a hope of defeating the personal guards if they fought in a large team. Yet, two of these personal guards had been tasked with guarding this room. Based on the other guards' auras and levels, it was safe to assume that they were at least mysterious iron rank. At this stage of the game, even a first-rate guild's upper echelons only employed mysterious iron personal guards. Secret silver personal guards were simply too rare, even rarer than epic items. Meanwhile, the various large guilds and superpowers typically used secret silver personal guards to protect their guild warehouses. Yet two of these NPCs defended a mere room. Why wouldn't this surprise the team members? However, these players' shock reached new heights as they entered the room. The room was incredibly small, and one would be hard-pressed to fit a hundred people within. Only a magic array occupied the room, carved into the floor in the center. It didn't seem like a place that warranted secret silver personal guard's protection. Shi Feng could not help but smile when he saw his team's confusion, but he didn't bother to explain the situation. Under Shi Feng's commands, the team then split into groups of ten. Everyone, step in the magic array, Shi Feng said as he did just that. Once everyone was in place, Shi Feng inserted a magic crystal before a white flash enveloped him and the nine members of his group. They vanished. The rest of Zero Wing's main force members finally understood what the magic array was for. They then entered the magic array and mimicked Shi Feng's actions, one party after another. When they reopened their eyes, they found themselves in a foreign town. It was one other than the Lost Town, located in the Boneless Land. The Lost Town was no longer the desolate, abandoned place it had been. Dilapidated buildings had once dotted the area, and not a single NPC could have been found in the town. But while the town wasn't teeming with NPCs, dozens wandered along the main street now. Similarly, renovated shops, restaurants, and hotels now filled the town. The Lost Town now looked like any typical NPC border town. However, unlike NPC towns, several ancient, imposing buildings remained. Ancient divine runes and images had been carved into these buildings' walls, and among them, the most eye-catching was the square, white tower in the town's center. A pitch-black orb hovered at the tower's peak, radiating a frightening aura that deterred anyone from casually approaching. Yet, the most important thing Zero Wing's members noticed was the town's mana density. The mana here was no less dense than in Stone Forest Town, and it felt even denser as one approached the white tower. The mana around this strange tower could even rival that of Silver Wing Town. Amazing. Where are we? Guild leader, are we training here? Everyone turned to Shi Feng after observing the town for a moment. Even Aqua Rose and the other upper echelons were stunned. They all wondered when Shi Feng had gotten his hands on such a wondrous place. Setting aside tea, He Town's leveling environment, its high mana density made the town incredibly valuable. This is the Lost Town. It also belongs to Zero Wing. Unfortunately, the town still lacks facilities, so I haven't opened it to the public, Shi Feng said, chuckling. He gestured to the White Tower and said, That tower will be your training venue. Although the guild members he had led here were all Zero Wing's main force members, none of them had known about the Lost Town before today. After all, Shi Feng hadn't told anyone about it. Even the internal members he had power leveled in the Boneless Land hadn't known that Zero Wing had secured the Lost Town. They had only known that a dangerous town existed in the Boneless Land. He hadn't kept this secret because he was overly cautious, but because the Lost Town's value warranted such caution. Even after ten years in God's domain, he had never heard of a town or place that could train players to reach and progress in the realms of truth. And this training system had been designed by the main God system. It was far more accurate and refined than the training systems the various superpowers had designed. Hence, he couldn't afford to reveal this secret to the world. If news about the Lost Town's ability leaked, Zero Wing would instantly become public enemy number one. The various superpowers definitely wouldn't let Zero Wing off the hook. However, to increase the strength of Zero Wing's experts as quickly as possible and nurture more experts that could contend with peak experts, he had no choice but to take this risk. As players progressed in the game and reached higher levels, Zero Wing would continue to lose its advantages. The moment that Zero Wing fell behind, its enemies would strike.
Shi Feng had another reason for leading his main force to the lost town as well. Now that Zero Wing had solved the issue of its magic crystal shortage, he could afford to operate the extraordinary tower every day. We're training in there? Zero Wing's players looked at the tower, a little disappointed. Does it have advanced combat rooms? None of them showed any interest in training in a venue the main god system had created. They had already experienced such training systems before. One such example was the Divine Colosseum's Trial Tower. The Trial Tower held absolute authority over God's Domain's players. Not only could they test their strength in the Trial Tower, but they could also use it to discover their flaws and improve themselves. They assumed the tower before them was similar to the Trial Tower. Unfortunately, the Trial Tower only offered minor assistance at this point. It was unlikely that this White Tower, which looked far less impressive than the Trial Tower, would provide better training. Not interested? Shi Feng could not help the smile pulling at his lips when he noticed the team's lack of enthusiasm. How about this? If any of you manage to get past the first floor within one week, I'll reward you with a bloodline that will improve your life rating. A bloodline? Guild leader? Are you for real? Shadow Sword and the others' excitement returned. They had all heard of bloodlines, and many of them had taken part in the Demon Kin King raid on Kama Island. They had seen the space-time bloodline that the Demonkin King had dropped. There was no doubt that the bloodline was a super-powerful item, and it wouldn't be an exaggeration to call it a free pass to Tier 3. It could even help players when they challenged their Tier 4 promotion quests. Of course, Shi Feng nodded. However, you have to clear the first floor within a week. The tower's first floor? Shouldn't that be a piece of cake? Zero Wings players then dashed towards the extraordinary tower, more than eager to get to work. Shi Feng, however, casually entered the tower and headed for the top floor. He then called up the extraordinary tower's system interface and released the second floor's seal. This was the reason he had come to the lost town today. Chapter 1980 Chapter 1980, Second Floor Unsealed the moment Shi Feng chose to remove the seal on the Extraordinary Tower's second floor, he instantly lost 100,000 of the 110,000 magic crystals he had recently collected. The divine runes on the Extraordinary Tower's exterior then lit up with a steady, colorful brilliance. Mana flooded toward the tower from far beyond the lost town's boundaries, rapidly increasing the town's mana density. After several seconds of this, the Lost Town's mana density was even higher than in Silverwing Town, and after a few more seconds, it could rival the density in Zero Wing Giddy. Everyone within the Extraordinary Tower felt the change. Due to the increased mana density, the players within the tower received a well-rested buff, indicating that they could accumulate 15% of the double EXP buff after resting in the Lost Town for 48 hours. Sure enough, this Extraordinary Tower is really amazing. Shi Feng was slightly surprised at how dense the mana had become. The mana density within the tower was at least 20% higher than in Zero Wing City. This meant that players would recover their stamina and concentration 20% faster inside the Extraordinary Tower than they would in the city. Even if players practiced advanced combat techniques, they could train continuously at an adequate pace in such a mana-rich environment. To God's Domain's expert players, Training here was the ultimate dream. If Zero Wing offered such a precious training ground for lease, the various superpowers would likely form a long line for a chance to rent it, since mastery of an advanced combat technique would provide their players with a huge boost in combat power. Refinement Realm experts would be able to challenge Flowing Water Realm experts, and Flowing Water Realm experts would be able to challenge Void Realm experts. However, Advanced combat techniques were not easy to master. Executing such techniques consumed a lot of stamina and concentration. Meanwhile, players' regeneration of stamina and concentration was normally extremely slow. Hence, players could practice their advanced combat techniques for only a very limited number of times each day. Yet mastery of advanced combat techniques required a lot of practice. Thus, the higher mana density inside the tower was a great boon. Shortly after Shi Feng released the seal on the Extraordinary Tower's second floor, 
the divine runes and magic arrays carved on the inner walls lit up as well. Unfortunately, if he wanted to use the second floor's training system, he'd have to pay 5,000 magic crystals per day. Even a first-rate guild could afford such an expense for only a few days. The Manatite Vein Zero Wing had recently acquired was the only reason Shi Feng dared to activate the second floor now. Despite the guild's recent expansions, Zero Wing would still have nearly 20,000 extra magic crystals after daily expenses. Hence, the guild could afford to maintain the second floor's operation. Shi Feng then left the top floor and prepared to face the second floor challenge. Although he had comprehended the realms of truth's principles and had mastered the truth realm to reach the ascension realm, he had relied on his personal understanding to accomplish these feats. He hadn't received any official training or guidance, but now that the system's specialized training for the realms of truth was before him, he had to put it to good use. Furthermore, he had to prepare for using the ancient god's secret key he had obtained. Obtaining an ancient god's secret key was incredibly difficult. Who knew when he would find another one? If he wished to maximize the secret key's value, he'd have to grow as strong as possible. He'd be able to secure better items from the secret key only with better survivability. As Shi Feng descended the staircase to the Extraordinary Tower's first floor training ground, he noticed that it had implemented a similar system to that which had stopped players from entering the tower before he had taken ownership of the town. Players on the first floor are required to approach a magic array in the center. On their way there, the tower bombarded the players with various attacks, although the attacks didn't cause any damage. They only repelled the players. The only difference between the first floor training ground and the initial defense mechanism was the attack pattern they used. When Shi Feng had found the extraordinary tower and tried to enter, he had faced only head-on attacks. However, in this training ground, players were attacked from every direction. Of course, players couldn't use any skills or spells. They had to rely on their own abilities to reach the center of the room. Fire Dance and her companions were moving towards the central magic array, but no matter how they tried to contend with the incoming attacks, the result was the same. None of them could get within 100 yards of the array. The training ground's radius was only 200 yards, but yet no one could cross half this distance. Even Violet Cloud and Fire Dance, who were both close to reaching the flowing water realm, barely crossed the 60-yard mark. The best among the other refinement realm experts could reach only the 50-yard mark. As for non-refinement realm experts like Remnant Cloud and Stubborn Bone, they couldn't even make it to 30 yards. The first floor training ground was far more difficult than the extraordinary tower's defense mechanism. Guild leader, this place is amazing. We already have to face more than a dozen head-on attacks before we reach the 10-yard mark. The attacks are so fast, too. Unlike players and monsters' attacks, these attacks seem to appear and disappear abruptly. It's impossible to predict the attack trajectories and dodge. And that's not even the best part. Once we cross the 10-yard mark, we're attacked from all directions. No human can stop these attacks. That's right. Not only do the attacks come from every direction, but you have to deal with more attacks as you move forward. When you reach the 50-yard mark, the attacks even change their trajectories without warning. And the further you progress, the more the attacks change. These transformations are so frustrating. Even Big Sis Fire got defeated shortly after crossing the 60-yard mark. When Zero Wings players noticed Shi Feng's approach, they burst into a round of enthusiastic comments. Despite their slow progress, they were all immensely excited, feeling as if the doors to a whole new world had just opened up before them. They were all experts that had joined Zero Wing's main force. Even the weakest among them was close to the half-step refinement realm standard, and many of them had mastered multiple combat techniques. Even so, they felt like infants learning to walk when they faced the training ground's trial, able to apply only a tiny fraction of their knowledge and combat experience. This was especially true for people like Remnant Cloud and Stubborn Bone, who had just joined Zero Wing's main force. They had never imagined that Zero Wing had found such an awe-inspiring training ground. 
They all felt as if they were learning something even more amazing than combat techniques. As they continued to challenge the trial, their reactions and ability to make instant judgments improved. However, they knew that they couldn't rely on these improvements to pass this trial. They needed to ingrain the appropriate reactions and the attack's transformations in their minds until they could react instinctively. It felt as if this trial were trying to engrave a complete set of basic combat techniques into their bones, enabling them to execute a technique with every movement. It seems you all have gained a significant harvest. I hope some of you break through the first floor's training ground in one week. I'll be waiting on the second floor, Shi Feng said, chuckling. He then headed for the magic array at the center of the training ground.